What's going on, mobile gamers? Today I'm going to show you guys how to play some Nintendo 3DS on your Odin 2. So let's jump in and up our gaming knowledge. Alright gamers, so the very first thing we are going to do is navigate to the website I linked below. If this website, which is GitHub, does not exist 20 years down the road, I'm sorry. I have backed up all of these versions of this MMJ Citra in my discord don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like this video don't forget to share and again subscribing does help with the youtube analytics and with our 5,000 subscriber giveaway if you want to find out more click on the video in the link below as well to find out more now that that promotion is done we're going to navigate to this website and we're going to download the very first one at the top there that says citra mmj 2023 1010 that is just the latest build as of 2023 of october 10th you're gonna click it you're gonna let it download and do its thing now the storage access version is basically the same thing but it saves all the data to uh the data folder on your device i like this version because it actually writes all the data internally to my device so that if i uninstall the app all my data for my game is always going to be there and i'm going to show you that as well now that that game has been downloaded, or that application has been downloaded, we're gonna go to our downloads folder. We're gonna click on that APK and we're gonna let it install. Now we're gonna click open, click allow. Now this is where we're going to add our games folder. This isn't a video to show you how to get games. You can either go to internet archives, you can go to the H shop, make sure your games are in the form of a .3DS if you're using a front end. Otherwise you can download some games that are .caa files. Now that the eShop is closed down, I don't care about sharing that you can download 3DS games anywhere because you can't buy them from the eShop anymore and you can't even buy them publicly. So that's my little spiel on that matter. Now, add folders to library. Now, I have a folder that I've already compiled for this video called Nintendo 3DS. You can name it 3DS, N3DS, whatever you want, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna navigate into that folder. I have a games folder inside that folder and then I'm gonna click OK. Now all of my games are gonna load up and it's gonna be pretty quick. I'm gonna go to this little icon that looks like a processor in the top right hand side and I'm gonna set up my main features. Most of these features are already pre-set up for you, which is pretty good, but for the Odin 2, most games you can render it at 14 or 4X and 3X perfectly fine. I like 3X, I don't see any benefit of 4X on a lot of games, we're rendering a smaller screen device on a bigger display and I think this looks great now showing the FPS I'm gonna turn that off but if you want to see your FPS counter at all times that's up to you I'm turning mine off just for the sake of this video enable hardware shader yes we want to leave that on accurate multiplication I'm gonna turn that to fast this turns the games to display issues but slows down the simulation if you find that any of the games are very slow then turn that off but this helps render the game a lot better Shader type, we're going to use normal shader with cache. That's just, leave that the way it is. Pros processing effect, we don't need that. Custom textures, that's going to be something that I'm going to do a kind of advanced kind of setup guide later on down the road. I've noticed some custom textures do slow down the game processing a lot, so maybe I won't cover that. I don't know yet. When enabled, emulation CPU usage will limit to a smaller slice. Now, some games benefit from this. I turn this on on like lower end devices. This device doesn't need that. Speed limit percentage, we don't need to do that as well. New 3DS mode. Now, if you're playing like new Minecraft or something, yes, you do need to have that enabled. Enable CPU JIT just in time. Yes, we're going to leave that and everything else other than enabling the audio stretching, which I find audio stretching does help quite a bit. Then we're going to turn that on. Next, we're going to go back. We're going to click on the three dots. We're going to go to input binding. For some reason, this application, when you click on the left joystick, your screen looks like it's faded. I don't know why, but it does. So what I'm going to do is in my input binding, you don't have to set up all these other buttons unless you want to change them for whatever reason, is I'm going to go down to where it says swap screen, which is an option to swap your screen. And I'm going to click on my left joystick. Now my settings, and alt speed button that's going to be my m2 that's all up here preference as well so i'm going to use my m2 button on the back and that's going to load up your settings menu when you're in a game now i'm going to click back and i'm going to load up donkey kong country returns 
Now I'm gonna click the back button on the actual device. I'm gonna go to settings. I'm gonna type in or click on hide input buttons. I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna change my force texture filter. This is very vital to most of these games to linear. Geometry shader, I turn that off. Enable shader, shadow rendering, I turn that off as well. Asynchronization shader compilation, I turn that on. Layout is all up to your preference. Now, I like the large layout, which allows you to have a little screen on the right hand side to see and touch. You can actually touch that screen still for certain games that need it. But that is again, all up to your preference. You can set up a custom layout. So you can use custom layout. Okay, now this custom layout is gonna default like this. How I like this custom layout set up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna swap my screen. That is gonna be my top screen, that's gonna be my bottom screen instead. And the reason for this, I'll show you this. I like to use this kind of design just because I want this second screen, which is my bottom screen on your Nintendo 3DS, to be below my top screen. So I'm just gonna swipe this so that it stretches and fills out the whole screen, just like that, click done. Now you can see that there's still a little bit of the other screen back there. We can try to mess around with it until you actually get it filled out. So let's do that. And there we go, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to go back, we're going to go to settings, and how you do that again, you use custom layout. So, I'm going to go out of this game for a second. If I go into another game, press back, go to settings, set up my game, the same way I set up the other one, these are all the same settings, and go to use custom layout, that custom layout is always going to be available to you. Now, as you see here, this game, for some reason, Super Mario Bros., Sometimes turns on skip texture copy. I don't know why, but it should not be turned on. Don't ever turn that on because you want your textures to always be there. Now, the texture isn't there right now. So that's just because the game hasn't rendered for the first time. And then now that texture is loading. This always happens with this game. I don't know why. And it's not an issue with the game itself. I think it's just the, the actual emulator. But once you get into the game and everything, everything looks amazing. So... Again, this is how you set up Nintendo 3DS fairly quickly on your Odin 2 to render your games at a perfect, almost near perfect, well, mostly perfect rendering state, just like you played your 3DS. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you like and subscribed already by this point, because I have more guides for this, and I can still see some red on the bottom there. I might have to fix that later. Bye-bye!